Today I'm going to show you my November makes. Hi, I'm Alex and this is Gingerhead & Co, my sewing vlog. Today I'm going to talk about things that I made in November, that I sewed in November. The first thing is the thing that I'm wearing, so it's a dress. It's a dress from Berta Style magazine. I got back to my Berta Style magazines. I made quite a few things in November that are from Berta Style magazine. This is an well, sort of oversized, really boxy, really comfortable dress. Let me just check the number because I don't remember. Pattern number 108 from April 2020. And uh, there was a version for your daughter, if you have a daughter, for a little girl as well. Very similar to this one. It's a dress that is meant to be super comfortable and that's all it is. I made size 34, but that hasn't got that many sizes. Usually it's between 36 and 44, so something like 8 to 16, roughly, very roughly, because it depends on the measurements. But I'm talking about the British sizes, 8 to 16. European sizes, roughly 36 to 44, that's normal for bad. That they also have some patterns that are for taller women, some patterns that are for shorter women, some patterns that are for bigger sizes, but then you don't have the smaller sizes. But anyway, so I made size 34 and it's a very, very loose fitting dress and it's gathered in the, well, the waist is not really the waist. It's got a longer bodice and then you've got the skirt part that is gathered into this long bodice. It's got pockets, it looks like that, right? So it's got pockets in the seams and it's got in the original pattern sleeves that are just let loose, that are hemmed, but I can stand it, so I added little cuffs, tiny little cuffs. That's what I prefer. Life's full of compromises, so I have to remove my dog Brian to start recording. The dress has a lowered waistline, inseam pockets and the gathered skirt part. I added a back seam because I had to take the dress in a lot. It can actually make dresses look better, especially if you need a sway back adjustment. It's a very bouncy dress and because of the amount of ease I feel naked and I have to keep my hands in my pockets to check that I'm still wearing the dress. It's best to make it in fabric with a lot of drape and a soft hand. Stiff fabric would accentuate the I'm wearing a tent effect. It's an extremely comfortable, if not flattering dress. It can hide a big meal, but for me, it's almost like active wear because it makes me want to jump up and down all the time. It has bust darts, but no closures, so it's easy to make and easy to wear. And it makes me laugh a lot. My husband, Hutch Hubby, says it makes me look like a cartoon character, but it might just be more due to the way I behave. I can't be serious wearing this dress. Well, I was aiming at grunge and sort of you know kind of young style and all that super comfortable but i think it's more like victorian warehouse no it, it just it's not flattering but i was well i had this kind of exchange of let's say a conversation but on social media because now we are limited to conversations on social media which is not a good thing but i had this conversation with jojo in kittenish behavior group about things that are not flattering on purpose and this is not meant to be flattering it was meant to make me experiment a bit and to make me feel comfortable it does make me feel comfortable but it's awful i do not look in any way good in this dress but so what i suppose there is a trend now because we work from home and we do so many things in a different way than we used to there is a trend to wear more comfortable clothes and this is definitely mirrored in what I made in November. Everything is pretty comfortable. Everything is mainly comfortable. Everything is just to be worn in the house or maybe, you know, when people can only see my face on Zoom or whatever. So, well, I didn't really care that much about the aesthetics of it. I just wanted to try the pattern but I had some problems with the pattern it was huge so as I said I used size 34 which is the smallest pattern that you can get in Berda magazine and I had to take it in almost three inches and it's still huge but I didn't want to change it anymore because it started changing the shape of the dress I could have changed the, the pattern so made the pattern smaller in the first place but well I'm too late now so I just made it as it was in the pattern and then worried about the consequences and the consequences were there. 
the consequences were that you could easily sneak another person into the dress <laughs> it was really really oversized it was also too long it was horrible i mean it's not pretty now but it was horrible and i still love the dress i am going to wear it i'm going to wear it with my leather jacket perhaps and and some really heavy boots and feel like i'm back in the 90s i was young in the 90s so why not you know feeling young again and i use the fabric that my sister got me in Poland so I'm not quite sure what it is but it's I think it's synthetic I don't think it's it's natural fiber but I wanted something floaty something that I wasn't very very careful about I didn't really mind wasting it I don't think it's wasted because I am going to wear this dress albeit in the house <laughs> but so what it is going to be worn I know that most of the people I know criticize this dress including her chubby who is my husband he hates it but then so what again he hates it in a very head chubby way so he doesn't criticize me in the dress he just laughs at the dress well fair enough it's it's not a flattering dress as i said it's floaty it's comfortable i feel i feel weird really because it's it's very much not my style my cat is here so the camera is shaking all the time which doesn't help but i really want to record the video well anyway the pattern is very easy to make it is an easy thing to, to sew it would probably take you about two hours to put together with pockets and everything and hemming nothing too difficult I changed another thing so I, I added a band because I prefer bands it's facing in the pattern but but I prefer bands and the cuffs and that's probably it apart from trying to make it a bit smaller after sewing it and because it's got pockets in the side seams I couldn't really do much in the side seams so I couldn't take the side seams smaller without taking the po pockets out and I was just kind of experimenting so I was doing everything quickly I didn't really think about it much it's one of the things that I like making and it's one of the things it's the process of making it is precisely how I sew and how I feel happiest sewing so feel free to criticize the dress i do realize that this is not a pretty dress but criticizing my process is kind of a direct attack on me so please don't i like something like that i like checking whether things work or not and yeah in plenty of cases they don't but it's fine it's it's my life my fabric my money i can waste as much time and money as i wish and i can't afford so yeah I can't say that it's a disaster, but it's definitely not something that I'm going to repeat. I just don't think the style likes me much. I'm not cool enough to wear things like that. And then because it, it was getting cold, 8th November, I had the urge to make jackets and coats. I've got too many jackets and coats, so I made the jacket for my sister. It was meant to be for my sister and she likes it, so, so hopefully she is going to like it when she sees it in person it's a casual jacket with a shawl collar with no closures but i did add a tiny snap because i wanted to the original pattern is shorter and i like the short versions too it can easily be worn with jeans or less formal outfits because it's not terribly smart the sleeves are set in and they are very comfortable the pattern is well drafted and it comes together very neatly. I added patch pockets because I thought the jacket needed them. I also added a belt. You will need relatively soft fabric to allow the collar to fold nicely, but the pattern will work in most coating weight fabric. The jacket is online, so it's a bit like a less formal semi-smart blazer and my belt is made out of the selvage and cover stitched. Of course you don't need a belt or you can wear it with a shop bought leather belt. You can also make it cropped and make it look more like a motor jacket. I think it's a very versatile pattern and you can have a lot of fun with it. The jacket is from Berda easy magazine this time and it's pattern number six it's from the first issue of uh, the magazine there are four issues a, a year as far as i know and i made again size 34 
I took it in a bit, so I cheated and I didn't add seam allowances to the sleeves and to the sides, so here, right? I didn't want to make it smaller as such, shorter at the same time, so I just cheated and didn't add seam allowances everywhere. But there are seam allowances in the heads of the sleeve and, uh, and in the shoulders and in here. So as you can see, it's a shawl color. It's very easy to make, it's unlined. And the fabric, I got this fabric from Colville because, well, I got a lot of, <laughs> a lot. I got a lot of fabric in November. November is a month where I celebrate a lot of things. So I was born in November and I got married in November. So obviously, because of our culture, we give presents and we receive presents when uh, the there is a birthday or an anniversary. I got a lot of presents and most of it was fabric, but I also, for some unknown to me reason, decided that I needed some cheap fabric or inexpensive fabric to practice on. And I bought a lot of fabric from Colville. So this is from Colville. It is a wool blend. I had done the, the burn test, so there is some wool in it. And my cat says it is because my cat sleeps on the fabric. If it's got wool in, Ulysses, my cat slept on this fabric as well. But my decision to use this fabric was mainly because this fabric wasn't expensive. I paid 20 pounds for three meters in Colville for that fabric, but it's normally 15. So don't be fast because you might buy something more expensively than it will be in the future. But that's fine. It's still very, 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 very cheap. And I've got some leftover. I, I like the fabric. It's got some kind of orangey yellow tones as well. The pattern is very easy, but that easy. If it's your first jacket, that, that's a good choice of the first jacket. If you've never made the jacket, I would recommend it because everything is explained better in Berda. Easy. <laughs> everything is kind of illustrated. So it's, it's a bit more like independent patterns or, well, maybe not that much, but I added pockets because I wanted pockets that are just patch pockets, so again, easy to make. And I added a belt and I used my salvage to make the belt. So you can see, because I, I just like it. I did it on my other coat that I'm going to show you in a second. And that's pretty much it. It's perfect for this time of the year. Well, in the UK, it's perfect for all year round. But in, well, it goes to my sister. So in Poland, it's probably going to be an outer layer in the spring. But now, probably not. It's much colder. But yeah, that's it. Easy. Uh, I added a snap as well to hold the... And I can't find it. Okay. So that's the snap. Yes, I also have two dogs. I've got two dogs and two cats currently recording with me. That's the snap that I added to put the collar in place when it doesn't need to be open. And that's it. It will take you one afternoon, I suppose, making this jacket. And the jacket in the pattern is not as long as mine because I added two inches to the length. No, sorry. I added four inches to the length and then I added four inches. I made a mistake. Four inches to the length of the sleeves. So my sleeves are hemmed, but they're hemmed up to here. Two inches are folded under. Because better patterns very often have sleeves that are too short for me. I have no idea why, but their sleeves tend to be quite short. It's sometimes the same with uh, the bottoms, so the legs of the bottoms are very often a bit too short, which is weird because they're not too small, so hmm, I don't know. But, but just in case, I added four inches. I was going to add four centimeters, not four inches. I just, yeah, I didn't really think about it. And that, that's it. That's, I'm not going to talk more about it because I don't think that many people use Berda easy. I don't think that many people, I mean, a lot of people use Berda style magazine, but not that many people make the same patterns. Let's move on then. So I said that I made a coat as well, and that's the coat. That's um, Vogue V8930. That's the pattern. And I made size six and it's huge. And I'm going to add some footage because you are very unlikely to see it on me if I put it on now. It's a cocoon shaped coat with a huge collar. The lapels go down to the hem. It's got a modern casual look. It's unlined. The pattern also has a self-lined view. 
there are two options of pockets in the pattern. The patch pockets that I didn't use have an inside patch pocket option as well. It's roomy and comfortable and perfect for layering. And I added my belt because I feel more comfortable with the belt, but you don't have to. The fabric needs some drape and because the wrong side is showing, it should be either double face or with both pretty sides type of fabric. But I quite like it. I mean, again, it's something that I wanted to experiment with. That's the choice of the, the fabric as well. The fabric is again from Colville and it was 20 pounds per three meters or 18 pounds per three meters. I don't remember because I bought a lot of fabric and I just wanted to experiment and check if I like the coat. Again, the coat is very quick and easy to make for a coat. <laughs> it probably took me, I don't know, a few hours, but not, not too long. And I didn't really change anything in the pattern. So the pattern is as is, I made size six, as I said, without any problems. The only thing is that I made kind of variation. So I was meant to, to make view B, but I made view B with different pockets because my pockets are in the side seams because I thought I can easily hide it. They are not going to flap like dog's ears in the air despite the fact that the, the coat is not lined, but they are fine, they're sitting inside and, and I prefer them like that because I think I wanted that to be a plain, really big, with a big color coat that I could wear as a sort of coat again. And it is a sort of coat again. It's got this ginormous color that goes down here. And the only thing that I didn't like, and I don't like, is the sleeves. They kind of stick out a bit. And I think it's the same issue as a lot of people had with the Sapporo coat. But I don't know. I've never made a Sapporo coat and I'm not going to. And again, I made the belt in the same way. So this is the selvage. I just, in here, I just overlocked it. So, and the fabric has kind of a bit of a sparkle but I'm not sure how well you can spot it it is a bit of a shimmer there and I'm not sure if it's any wool that I'm, I'm just not sure and yes I do add labels to my jackets because then I can hang them if I forget about the loop I can hang them yeah and I like the coat I have already worn it quite a lot and it's very comfortable. It is a bit of a statement coat so you can't not notice me when I wear it but it's fun. I walk fast with my hands in the pockets and I think I'm Dumbledore or John Collins in Dynasty, in the original Dynasty. So yeah, yeah it's okay, it's fine. If I talk that much about every piece we are never going to leave and this is going to be a very long video. Then I tested another pattern for Nicole from House of Akong. Akong. I have no idea how to say it. Akong, I suppose, but but why? I mean, I, I know why. Anyway, I tested another pattern for her, and they are skinny joggers. You might have seen them on Instagram. I made mine a bit. Well, mine are not like in the pattern. And again, it's a sentence that should just be written all over here. I know that I can't wear anything that is super high-waisted and they are high-waisted. I mean, the crotch is lowered, so they are supposed to be kind of slacks. They are supposed to be loose in your bum. And in the original pattern, they are. In mine, they are not so much because I, I shortened them two inches in the crotch and, uh, and added the two inches <laughs> to the legs. There are shortened lengthened lines in the pattern I mean, not for the crotch, but for the crotch, I know how to do it because I do it every time I try to make trousers. So this is not my normal style, the high-waisted ones. And they just end here and I can't, I, I really can't wear anything but it's, that ends here. And the, because of the band, the band is made out of ribbing, but there is also elastic in the band, which helps, they stay in place. But I wouldn't be able to, to wear them anywhere on my stomach. I've got fronts and my bowels don't like to be squashed in any way so I have to be careful with that because any sort of pressure might cause a lot of pain and pain is definitely something that I avoid in life 
physical and mental. The bottoms have a lot of pockets and this is a blessing if you wear them in the house because you can put a lot of treats for your dogs here. You can put various sewing tools in the back, back pockets. The back pockets, well, I knew I, uh, I wouldn't be a fan. <laughs> I'm not really a fan. I don't make my joggers with pockets like that because they always open. So you've got a single welt here, yeah, right? And because my bum is, I'm kind of narrow, but my bum goes more like that. So um, as such, I've been nicely puts it, I've got a perky bum. So my bum kind of yeah, extends beyond uh, my back and my bum sort of pushes the pockets like that. So they're always open. Yeah, does it make sense? <laughs> Which is not a look that I would go for. But it's super comfortable and again the word this video is sponsored by the word comfortable i made the cuffs out of ribbing as in the button but they are smaller mine are narrow because i thought my ribbing is a bit heavier than the fabric the fabric is some sort of cotton jersey unknown but i didn't want them to be bigger because they looked quite heavy so that means that my my bottoms are a bit shorter than I would normally make them because the, the cuffs would add what I need. I, I had already added two inches to the leg because I knew that the legs were too short. I measured that. And uh, well, I'm, I'm a short person, but I'm mainly short in my trunk. So my limbs are not terribly short for my size, <laughs> if that makes sense. That's why sometimes I do have to add something to the length. Unfortunately, not everywhere. So it's, I don't grow. I'm still five feet, almost three, five, three, almost. Uh, 160 centimeters or so one meter, 60 centimeters, if you prefer more European way of describing things. I like the bottoms. I wouldn't have bought the pattern for myself because I don't really go for this sort of shape, but I'm really glad that I tested the pattern and I quite like them. So they are definitely going to be worn. Whether I make another pair, I don't know because I tend to prefer really low kind of hipster style bottoms. Even my leggings are not high waisted. Well, some are, but most of them are not. So I'm not quite sure, but they are perfect for the lockdown or post lockdown situation. They really are. The instructions are clear. There are two sizes ranges. So you can buy your pattern either from size six to size 16 or size 16 to size 24. I don't think they're in one envelope. As far as I know, they are not, but well, at the moment of speaking, I don't think the button is available, but I know that it is going to be available any day now. Yeah, I've got two cats, as I said. Yeah, I like them. They are comfortable. So if, if you are into this sort of thing, I can definitely recommend because the instructions are clear. I know that Nicole is going to make a tutorial about how to make the, the welts, but the welts in the button that is going to be available are not precisely like that because they, we were sort of not quite sure about them so they are going to be slightly different but I liked certain things in the pattern I liked them a lot and I'm going to steal the way the pockets are made because they are made in one piece which might be funny but I've never seen it I've never before used it so I am definitely stealing that because that's just brilliant my pockets were always pocket and the, the pocket piece and uh, the lining piece, always in all my sports clothes as well. So brilliant, yes. I've just invented the wheel. I mean, I have stolen the invention of the wheel. My next make is Iris Hoodie or my interpretation of Iris Hoodie. You've seen this pattern on me so many times because this is my favorite hoodie pattern. And uh, I changed so many things that I'm not sure if I should be calling it Iris Hoodie. The original pattern is by Schnitchen and it doesn't really look like mine, but I like the, the pattern because of the raglan sleeves and because of the hood. The hood is huge and I like it. <laughs> That's why I make so many. It's my very loose interpretation of Irish hoodie by Schnitchen with plenty of changes. The cuffs, the bottom band, the hood lining or pockets don't exist in the original pattern. But I've been talking about this pattern many times, so I'm going to tell you something else. The word hood derives from Old English 
of West Germanic origin. It has the same root as the word hat, and it's one of the most difficult words for me to pronounce. Most people think that hoodies were first made by the US company Champion in the 1930s, but when you think about it, in medieval times, people had already been wearing them in the 12th century. They were more like capes, tunics and robes with hoods. But still, they're hoodies in a way. The term hoodie was first used around the 1990s with uh, rather negative connotations. Hoodies were then often associated with criminals or subcultures. The following makes are going to be my exercises in cover stitching. <laughs> as per usual. I'm really sorry about the changes in the frame, but my dogs decided that enough is enough. They stopped me from making long videos. Well, anyway, the hoodie is from French Terry and the French Terry is, this one is from Metre et Centimetre and it's called the Dog Father. <laughs> That's why I bought it. But I love it. It's got blue accents here. So I decided to make the sleeves and the lining of the hood from Jersey. It's cotton jersey from mienkia.com. It's really excellent. The quality is excellent and <laughs> I've got ribbing that is precisely matching the color of uh, the jersey. So it's speckled, right? Melange in other words. And I added the ribbing here as well. So the bottom band is made out of ribbing in my case. And I made different pockets this time. So there are sort of patch pockets inside. You can see that I was cover stitching like a crazy person. I was cover stitching everything. But these are just, just pockets that are ending here. You can see the line of cover stitching that limits the pockets. So they're not as huge as some of my pockets or most of my pockets. Nothing else to, to add because if you want to know more about this hoodie and my changes, I've made loads of videos with this particular pattern in. But I just wanted to show you because I like the prints and I like the fact that in my opinion, <laughs> the colors go together. You might disagree, that's absolutely fine. In here I've got cover stitching that is top and bottom. So yes, utilizing my machine. Yeah, it, uh, I love it <laughs> because it's fun. I also made some hoodies that match. So one for me, one for my husband, her chubby. And the first one is from Berda Style Magazine again. This one is from an old issue. So it's from October 2018 and the pattern number is 119. I've never before made this pattern, so I might tell you a bit about it. The pattern has wide raglan sleeves with a shoulder dart. In the original pattern, the sleeves are hemmed, not cuffed, and there is no bottom band or pockets. The hood is originally not lined. I used Liverpool crepe for the body and Ponte di Roma for the sleeves. I shortened the body of the pattern but added some length to the sleeves. It's quite a loose fitting sweatshirt with lots of room for layers of t-shirts or thermal vests. I think it could also work very well with cotton jersey for summer. I made one for myself and that's size 36 I think. I don't think I've changed anything. I don't think I used the seam allowances. So again, it is slightly smaller but not shorter and so on. It's okay, I lined the hood and that's one change. I have changed the pattern, surprise, surprise. I added cuffs and I added a bottom band because that's my style. And again, as you can probably notice, there is a lot of cover stitching. So I added pockets as well. Pockets are not in the pattern, but I added the pockets that are substantial, that big, but it's mainly for cover stitching. So it's top and bottom cover stitching again everywhere around the bottom band as well and I used the fabric from my stash I think it was from Colville again because again I wanted to experiment that's a pattern that is new I mean I had not made it before so I didn't want to waste any nice fabric and I was a bit cautious about some aspects of the pattern because the pattern has darts in the shoulders well in in the sleeves so where a shoulder seam in the raglan sleeve would be if it was in a raglan sleeve. But I closed the darts because I haven't been spectacularly successful with darts in the sleeves in my more active wear or lounge wear or whatever you want to call it. 
so I just decided that I prefer it without and it works without so the sleeves are quite loose which is well that's that was my intention to, to have kind of biggish sleeves that are then gathered in the cuff and yes I know that the cuff is not precisely the same color but but it is what it is the head is too small for me but Hachabi likes his so he says that I just have a big head yeah I, I won't deny it I'm a big headed person right but the next time I would add well I would change the head and I have lined it I've changed it slightly but I have lined it I I haven't cover stitched this one I have cover stitched Hachabi's so his masculine version it's even more cover stitched that's that's his it's almost the same right this well the sleeves are the same and are gathered in the cuff that sorry about the hair as we've established I live in the house with loads of animals so the hair is everywhere and well his is also cover stitch on the head mine isn't I was so generous but I, I didn't really like it that much I thought I would like it more but I don't like it that much Apart from that, yeah, it's, it's just an exercise in cover stitching. Well, yes, I know that this is a female pattern, so it is drafted for a woman. But when you think about it, who is are generally for men and women. And I think it's a hot topic now, like Harry Styles in a dress on the Vogue cover. So I will use my YouTube channel to express shock and horror, my opinion. I don't think that it makes anybody less of a man or more of a woman if they dress appropriately. So if they dress in clothes that are designed for the gender, the sex that they are assigned with or born with or whatever you choose to believe in. I think if Hachabi wore a dress, <laughs> he would be even more attractive. So all the theories that strong, powerful men attract women are true in the sense for me uh, true in the sense that I think you need to have a strong personality to do what you think is right not what whoever is trying to influence you is telling you I really don't think I don't have a problem with anybody wearing anything I know that there are certain situations where maybe some rules should be followed but although even that is debatable but but I do follow certain rules I don't impose my rules on other people that's why I often use patterns that are drafted for women to make clothes for my husband and he really doesn't mind also I think that clothes like the language don't really belong to dictators and it really doesn't matter what purists say it's the users who are going to change the fashion it's the users who are changing the language and whether we like it or not, it's the majority of people who are going to decide what is right, what is wrong. I'm not quite sure why I'm talking about it, but the, the Harry Styles situation discussion just kind of made me think that, well, he knows the rules, so everything is fine because he breaks the rules knowing them. It's good to know the rules to be able to break them, to communicate something, because when we wear something, we always communicate something whether the communication is clear is another matter or whether the the person who receives the message receives them in the form that we intended to them is another matter but that's that's a totally different discussion let's go back to the pattern <laughs> to, to hedge hobbies <laughs> to my female <laughs> interpreted into male so his is the same and as you can see again I did the the pockets that are meant to be just in case just in case we encounter a kitten that needs rescuing because well a disclaimer we've never stolen a kitten but we call the pockets kitten stealing pockets or pockets for stealing kittens just because you know like the yuppies in the 90s would say fail to prepare prepare to fail so if we ever see a kitten that is in uh, the hands of the oppressor that needs rescuing we are ready you know we would be devastated if we didn't have pockets when there was a situation in which a kitten needs rescuing or stealing we have never stolen a kitten we would never never ever do that <laughs> no, nothing this episode makes it very clear that i've got enough 
that's as it is. Well, so yeah, we are going to match, we are going to break stereotypes and we are going to look like much, much idiots, but we are fine with it. For the few of you who are still here, that's the same pattern. So it's bada 100, pattern number 119 from October 2018. And it's a different interpretation of it. As it's the same pattern, just with more of my creative input, I won't repeat anything I said about it. Instead, a bit more from the trivia slash history of the hoodie then. Hoodies were first made for workers to protect them from cold, then also for athletes and for the military. Hoodies became more of a fashion statement thanks to the cinema, as with plenty of other iconic pieces of clothing, movies made them desirable. Rocky Bilboa in the iconic running scene in Rocky greatly contributed to, to the popularity of a grey hoodie. The first Rocky film, the one with three Oscars, was released a year before I was born, so it's rather old. The hoodie has often been present in our political, social and economic discussions. In 2006, David Cameron, the leader of Conservatives, made a speech that the Labour Party parodied as Hug the Hoodie, or much more famously, after Trayvon Martin's tragic death in 2012, the hoodie became a symbol of support for victims of injustice. And yes, I've got a matching one for her chubby as well. Why not? This one is because I kind of like this fabric and I had already made the, the hoodie that you're going to see in a minute and another hoodie for my sister out of this fabric and I had some left. I still have some left. I bought three meters from Colville Fabrics and that was 15 pounds per three meters. So I've got three hoodies plus some some extra, something that I, I'm not sure how I'm going to use. That's just, that's just a bargain because apparently people didn't like it. I love it. It's got an interesting kind of medieval scenes pattern. So you've got all those kind of court ladies and I'm not very good at that, but you know what I mean. You can see that. You can describe the pattern as you see with your own eyes. And again, well, pockets, 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 pockets everywhere and cover stitching everywhere. And yes, I used my gold thread because I'm in love with this thread. And I also added my cuff ribbing that has sparkles here because I thought that would accentuate the yellowness, the goldness of uh, the thread here. I, I do like this thread a lot. And I made some other changes because this one is... Well, it's sort of French terry, but it's polyester, so it's nothing like the cotton French terry that I absolutely love. I'm not saying that I don't like it. I do, but it's more like commercial clothes that you can buy in, let's say, lower-end shops. So, But I still love it. I don't think it looks cheap. I think it looks really, really nice. But again, it's beauty in the eyes of the beholder and so on. So I do like it. I'm not trying to make it sound cheap because I don't think it looks cheap. But, but it doesn't feel in <laughs> as nice as, as my other French terry, the cotton base, the super expensive <laughs> French terry. Well, anyway, it is roomy. It is meant to be cover stitched everywhere. So everything here is cover stitched. And I made so many hoodies <laughs> for the pure joy of cover stitching. I know that you are probably sick and tired of me talking about cover stitching, but this is very, very me. I cover stitch because it gives me enormous pleasure and I like talking about cover stitching as well. I just can't stop. It's the same. I made the hood the same size and I also lined it. And this one, this one is cover stitched here. But apart from that, nothing else. The, the, again, the darts are closed because I didn't want them. And Hatch Hubby's hoodie is actually different. It's a different pattern. It's the pattern that I had used a couple of times or more than a couple of times before. It's also from Bada. It's pattern number 120 and uh, it's from December 2018 as well. It is his favorite pattern for a hoodie. It's got a bigger hood. So, and I make it overlapping. It's not ov overlapping, but in the pattern, but I've changed it. <laughs> surprise, surprise. All my patterns for hoodies get changed because there is a particular look that, um, in love with and I always tend to do the same things like add the cuffs yeah again my dogs don't really want me to record this video but but so sorry I was talking about cuffs I add cuffs I add 
the bottom band and I add huge pockets for stealing kittens. One day you will find that I've got another kitten and you will all think that it had been stolen. No, we only rescued them. But it looks like that. He really likes it. It's really warm because this fabric is really warm. This one is French Terry. I don't remember where I bought it. Ah, I know, I know. I bought it in Minkia.com. So, because I think it looks perfect with this color because it's sort of bluish. You, you, you've got the hues of blue in, in the fabric, in both fabrics. So it's been washed a few times because it's the end of no November when I record the video. So, uh, that was made at the beginning of, of November and he has worn it quite a lot while well, I'm at it. I'm going to show you the hoodie that I made for my sister and it's a different hoodie but I, I said that I had already used some of the fabric and I had some leftovers, that's mine. But hers was made for her. She likes hoodies that are opened that, with the front opening. So I didn't have a zip that was perfect for this size, this length of the hoodie. And um, I added snaps. See, that's a good example of not being prepared. But this is Halifax hoodie. Halifax hoodie is from Hey June Handmade. It's an old pattern. I think it's got five views. It's got two bodices. So one is more shaped, the other one is more boxy. And the, the boxy one has high-low hem. It is quite a well-known pattern. So I suppose it's nothing new for people who watch it. If not, you can have a little look, check it. Well, it's, it's a nice pattern, but it's not the best pattern for hoodies that I know. And uh, while the instructions are really, really good, there aren't any markings. So I know that that irritates some people. It doesn't irritate me because, well, I, I'm not really a fan of excessive notching, of marking everything, but, but that's just me. So that's the hoodie. I'll put some photos of me wearing that because my sister obviously can't model for you. My version is shorter than the button, but I haven't actually changed it a lot. It's quite an old button and very well known, so I won't go on about it. Instead, I can tell you something more about Trayvon Martin's shooting. Uh, it was in February 2012 and it brought about a discussion about hoodies and social profiling. Because Trayvon was wearing a hoodie when he was killed, but he was also black. A few more self-indulgent makes. This is <laughs> Frankie, again, Frankie from uh, Tilly and the Buttons book, Stretch. This is, again, my interpretation of Frankie, so the pattern has changed a lot, but I've been talking about Frankie a lot of times, so I'm not going to talk about the changes, but again, I needed pockets and I needed to cover stitch everything, so my pockets this time are kind of weird because I left this triangle here that doesn't really serve any purpose, but I can put my fingers here and I can have a finger fight, like, you know. I used my scraps because I like using scraps. It gives me <laughs> some sort of satisfaction. Like I'm not wasting too much. So it makes me feel better about myself. And I wear those <laughs> a lot. So my Frankie interpretations. I used French Terry here. That's French Terry that you might remember from my previous episode of makes where I made Iris hoodie by Schnitchen <laughs> out of that. I do love this fabric. I really didn't want to waste even like one tiny inch or, or even less than that. So I really wanted to use everything. I'm very happy with it. I used green ribbing here and I cover stitched everything again <laughs> because that's the point. I cover stitch everything. So I cover stitched the sleeves. I cover stitched the, the neck band. I cover stitched the ribbing everywhere. It was a really, really nice thing to make. It's going to be a really nice thing to wear, something that is that serves the purpose. So I feel very comfortable in it and it is very useful with the pockets for you know what. <laughs> and I've realized that I haven't shown you quite a few of the tank tops that I make that I call scrap tops and uh, you seem to like quite a lot. I love them, my sister loves them. They're going to go to my sister. There are scrap tops made out of scraps that I took out of my scrap box. So this is French Terry and the back is different. The back is, as you can see, a different color and it's plain. So 
yeah, it's it's something that we would both me and my sister would uh, wear to the gym or to wear every day. So they are the most used things, pieces of clothing that we both wear a lot. And this one is going to my sister because I'm not really, as you can probably see, I don't look good in, in light colors. So it kind of washes me out, especially in winter, especially when there is absolutely no ton apart from like my face and like, and hair yeah, because I go outside, I get tanned a bit. But, but the rest of me is hidden because I need to wear clothes because it's cold. It's winter, in case you didn't know. <laughs> but, but well, anyway, what was I talking about? I was talking about the top. I like making them. I make them a lot. And they are still my number one for using up my bigger scraps. Again, I can use my cover stitch so much that it's just almost like sensual pleasure. It's cover stitched. That's ribbing. Cover stitch. That's ribbing. And that's it. That's stretchy, that comfortable. Do you want to see another one? Another one is from Viscose Jersey. This Viscose Jersey is from Material Girl Laura. Well, she doesn't operate, she doesn't sell fabric anymore. But, but still, it's great. And I think you can buy it in some other shops or you could buy it in some other shops. So if you like it, and I do recommend it, you can, you can find it, still find it online. This one is because it's viscose jersey, it's slightly more clingy, which not everybody likes, but I do, and my sister seems to like viscose jersey or tops in viscose jersey quite a lot. It's super comfortable. This one is just made out of the same fabric all over, so I haven't changed anything. Oh, you can see my bra. Oh, shocking. But the ribbing is the same. The ribbing is from minke.com because this is my <laughs> favorite ribbing. This is not for everyone because it's quite heavyweight, so, or heavier than let's say viscose weight but but I like it and obviously if I like it I buy it more and more <laughs> I was going to mention the the crazy Wednesdays in uh, in minka.com they do sell fabric cheaper or they kind of choose at random fabric that is going to be discounted every Wednesday I'm not sure how long it's going to last but so far they've been doing it for quite some time and uh, the yeah, the deals are great. So if you want to use minka.com, they ship from Poland. They ship worldwide, I think, as far as I know. They definitely ship all over Europe. Well, yeah, it's it's one of my favorite shops. I mean, they're not cheap, so it's not like you're going to get a lot of things very cheaply, but the quality is amazing. And uh, I did use the, the Crazy Wednesday discounts the quality was precisely the same. So for half the price, I think everything is 50, everything that is included in this offer is 50% off. So yeah, I was very happy with it. And I know that quite a few people also recommended trying to find out if something is perhaps cheaper on the crazy Wednesday. Yeah, so well, anyway, <laughs> I'm going to show you one more and that's it. And this scrap top is made out of cotton jersey that I got from La Masi. That's the Danish design. I made my McCall's dress out of this fabric. The back is different because I only had a bit of this fabric. So the back is old blue and the back is cotton jersey. I have no idea where I bought it. I suppose either minke.com or metri centimetre again. But it is going to my sister. I like it a lot, but I've got a dress with precisely the same pattern from the same fabric. So, well, I don't really need a top that is the same. But I do love it. There are no kind of booby problems with the flowers on each boob, boob and, and things like that. Although that wouldn't really worry me that much because, well, I just wanted to use scraps. As the name suggests, they are scrap tops. I make them from scraps of fabric, from leftover fabric. Again, everything is cover stitch. I'm not going to talk about it because that will probably send you into a coma. But... I was going to tell you why I'm not going to do a fabric haul. I got a lot of fabric recently, as I mentioned, because it was my birthday and it was my anniversary. And then it was my, I don't know, self-pitying period where I thought that I needed some fabric. So I got a lot, but um, I'm going to skip making fabric holes or pattern holes for a bit. Um, precisely because I know, I know a lot of people who work in arts in the creative sector of our economy and they are not earning and I don't want to talk about things that I buy because I don't feel very 
well, morally, ethically, talking about it. I know that it's nobody's business, but I just don't really want to. I just don't feel comfortable talking about spending money when perhaps some people can't or some people have to be careful and it might make them uneasy in some way. I do not want to make anybody feel bad about anything. And well, things will get better and I will then perhaps show you my splurges on fabric or, or patterns or whatever bit. But yeah, and I'm also not really very keen on using the Black Friday sales for, again, personal reasons. I just, if I want to buy something, I will buy it. If I don't want to buy something, no amount of discounts on Black Friday is going to make any difference. But yeah, that's it. I'm not sure if I needed to say that, but I did because, again, as we've established, this is my channel. So I talk about things that I think about. Thank you very much for watching and see you soon. Bye!